Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Join Data Spatially tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. In this tutorial, you will assess liquefaction risk of historic places in the city of Christchurch, New Zealand. Liquefaction is a process in which sediment loses strength and stability during ground shaking in an earthquake. You'll spatially join the liquefaction risk layer to the historic places layer, append new features to the layer, and update the liquefaction risk values. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. I've opened ArcGIS Pro and signed in to my ArcGIS Online account. We'll start by opening the Join Data Spatially project package. Make sure the portal is set to ArcGIS Online and search for Join Data Spatially. Open the one with the authoritative badge. The project opens with a map showing the urban area of Christchurch, New Zealand. Historic places are shown with pin symbols and liquefaction risk zones are shaded polygons. Let's examine the attributes of the historic places and liquefaction risk layers. Open the historic places layer attribute table. There are fields for the feature's name, address, and a historic registry number. There are 322 records in the layer. Open the liquefaction risk attribute table. There are fields for risk category and the date the risk assessment was made and last modified. The category field includes three technical category values representing increasing risk of damage to buildings in a future earthquake. Technical category one is minimal risk, two is moderate, and three is significant. Now that we've examined the attribute tables, we can close them. Confirm that the liquefaction risk layer is selected in the contents pane. Press and hold the control key and click the historic places layer to add it to the selection. On the map tab, click the explore tool drop down arrow and click selected in contents. Set the map scale to 1 to 10,000 so we can see the historic places better. Click any historic place to open a pop-up. The pop-up displays the attributes of the historic place and the risk polygon that contains it. Close the pop-up pane. Click the Historic Places layer so it is the only selected layer. Right-click the layer and click Zoom to Layer. Now that we have a better understanding of our data, we will spatially join the liquefaction risk layer to the Historic Places layer. This will add values from the liquefaction risk table to the Historic Places table according to the risk zone that each historic place is in. Right-click the Historic Places layer, point to Joins and Relates, and click Add Spatial Join. The Add Spatial Join tool opens in a floating window. The target features parameter is correctly set to the Historic Places layer. Click the Join Features drop-down arrow and select Liquefaction Risk. For the Match option, select Within so that each historic place will get the attributes of the Liquefaction Risk polygon that it lies within. Check the Permanently Join Fields checkbox. The join needs to be permanent because later in the tutorial we'll append more features to the Historic Places layer. Expand the Fields heading. The Field Map parameter displays a list of the fields in the Liquefaction Risk layer. The Category field is the only one of these fields you need, so we'll remove the others. Click the Created Date field to select it, press the Shift key, and click the Shape Area field to select the four fields. Hover over one of the fields and click Remove. In the Field Map parameter, click Edit to open the Field Properties dialog box. In the Field Name cell, highlight the existing value for category, replace it with the name Liquefaction Risk, and press Enter. Change the alias to Liquefaction Risk as well. When the field is added to the Historic Places table, it will have the new, more meaningful name. Click OK on the Field Properties dialog box, and click OK again to run the Add Spatial Join tool. When the tool is finished running, open the Historic Places layer attribute table. The renamed category field from the Liquefaction Risk layer is added to the table. Each historic place is now associated with the risk category of the polygon in which it lies. A join count field is also added. We don't need it, so click the name field to select it and click Delete. On the Delete field prompt, click Yes. Let's open a data engineering view to get statistics and create a chart. In the Historic Places table, click the Liquefaction Risk field heading to select the field. Right-click the heading and click Explore Statistics to open the data engineering view. 
you can see some interesting information. For instance, the mode, or the most common value, is non-residential area, and the least common value is technical category 1. Hover over the chart preview to see the percentages for each category. Right-click the row header, point to Create Chart, and click Bar Chart. The chart displays the number of historic places in each risk category. In the Chart Properties pane on the Data tab, check the Label Bars checkbox to show the number of historic places in each risk category. Click the Axes tab and change the Label Character Limit box to 20 so the full names of the categories display. On the General tab, Change the title to Historic Places by Liquefaction Risk Category. Uncheck X-Axis Title and change the Y-Axis Title to Number of Sites. Close the Chart View and close the Chart Properties pane. Now every historic place stores its liquefaction risk. But what if there are some historic sites we didn't know about? For example, we could discover a CSV file with information about a couple of historic sites in Christchurch. If these sites are not already included in the Historic Places layer, we can add them. In the Catalog pane, expand folders and expand Join Data Spatially, Common Data, and User Data. Right-click the Christchurch Heritage Sites CSV and add it to the current map. Open the CSV table. In the Christchurch Heritage Sites table, there are X and Y fields with latitude-longitude coordinates that let us create a layer from the table. The layer will let us see if these places already exist in the Historic Places layer. Right-click the table in the Contents pane, point to Create Points from Table, and click XY Table to Point. The Input Table parameter defaults correctly to Christchurch Heritage Sites CSV. The X field and Y field parameters default correctly to the X and Y fields in the table. The Coordinate System parameter defaults to GCS WGS1984. In the Output Feature Class text box, delete the entire path and type memory slash sites to create the point features in a temporary memory workspace. Click OK to create the sites layer. Zoom to the layer. Let's change the symbology so the points stand out more. In the Contents pane, click the symbol for the sites layer to open the symbology pane. Click the Circle 3 symbol. Turn the Sites layer off and then turn it on again to see that the features do not already exist in the Historic Places layer. We can append the features from the Sites layer to the Historic Places layer using the Append tool. In the Data Engineering view, right-click the row header, point to Integrate, and click Append. On the Append tool floating window, set the input datasets to Sites. The target dataset is already correctly set to Historic Places by default. Ideally, the two tables will have the same fields, which will make our task straightforward. Let's take a look. Both tables have name and address fields, and both store historic registry numbers. This is good, except the field names are different. We need to fix that. Both tables have some fields that don't exist in the other table at all. Click the Field Matching Type drop-down arrow and click Use the Field Map to Reconcile Field Differences. The RegID and Liquefaction Risk fields are marked with warning icons because they don't have fields with the same name in the input dataset. When the field names differ but the values are related, we can manually match those fields. Click Edit to open the Field Properties dialog box. In the Fields list, confirm that the RegID field is selected. Scroll through the Input Fields list and click the Register Number field to match it. You'll leave the Liquefaction Risk field unmatched because it doesn't have a corresponding field in the Sites table. Click OK to close the Field Properties dialog box and click OK again to run the Append tool. Make the Historic Places attribute table active and click Move to End to go to the bottom of the table. We can see the two records from the Sites layer have been added to the table. The Liquefaction Risk field has null values for these records because it doesn't have a matching field in the Sites layer. Make the map view active and turn the sites layer off. The appended features appear on the map in the correct locations, so we can remove the sites layer. We want to replace those null values with the appropriate liquefaction risk values. On the map tab, click the Explore Tool drop-down arrow and select Visible Layers. Click the new feature in the layer that represents Monk's Cave. The liquefaction risk zone that the point lies in is damage unlikely. Click the other new feature and note that the liquefaction risk zone is non-residential area. 
The last thing we need to do is calculate the liquefaction risk values for the new fields. In the Historic Places Attribute table, click the row header for feature 323 representing Monk's Cave. Right-click the Liquefaction Risk field heading and click Calculate Field. The input table parameter defaults to Historic Places. The toggle button indicates that values will be calculated for the selected record only. The field name parameter defaults to liquefaction risk, and the expression type parameter defaults to Python. In the fields list, click liquefaction risk to select it. Click the insert values drop-down arrow, click damage unlikely, and click OK to update the value. Repeat these steps for the rotten row batches feature. Delete the expression and insert the non-residential area value. Each historic place has a liquefaction risk value that can be used to evaluate safety requirements for maintaining and rebuilding the sites. Click Clear to clear the selected record and close the open tables and the data engineering view. Zoom to the historic places layer and save the project. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.